Today on Real Bankruptcy, Bill Simpson is at his limits with his credit card and upside down on his house. I've been using my credit cards just to stay afloat. And his mother back in Chicago is suffering from dementia and needs his help. I uh, just found out a couple months ago my mother's sick. She's got dementia. She needs full-time care. Will Sam be able to save his house, his cars, and allow him to take care of his mother? But first, Mike and Elizabeth Spencer are facing possible Chapter 13 or Chapter 7 bankruptcy. What about all those phone calls we're getting? With Mike out of a job and Elizabeth's hours cut, will they be able to keep their home? And will Mike be able to keep his motorcycle? Well, the bike is very important to you and you're not going to lose the house. It put a lot of work into that house. All this today on Real Bankruptcy. Here, I don't want to be here, you know that. So the Spencers came in. We, uh, obviously, the, there was a little bit of a tension between them, so we had to kind of get through that. You know what we've been going through, and how are we going to pay everything off? It seemed to me that um, Mrs. Spencer was really the driving force. She was the one that wanted to come here and uh, look into the bankruptcy um, option. Uh, whereas her husband was not so keen on the idea. I can't keep living like this. I think you just bear with me and try to be more open-minded, okay? Please? I'm here. Let's just see what happens. See what the attorney says. But I think he probably decided to come in because he probably had very few other options. My name is Elizabeth. My name is Mike. We're in a little bit of trouble. Just get an overview here. See, you, you wrote down you got about 30,000 credit card debt, right? You owe the IRS a couple of grand. Everything Absolutely. happened just, so fast. Every, the economy and just, just went from just good to like awful. Well, I've looked through your pay stubs. It looks like you're making about 44,000 a year, right. right? And that's a salary? Yeah, a lot of it's going out the window though. I mean, we have so many bills and it's not... <laughs> Okay, and you don't get any, you don't have any other uh, job, any other source of income? No. And you're not working? Is that right? No, I'm not working. Are you, you, are you getting unemployment? Yes, I'm currently getting unemployment. Okay. It's That's been really hard there. since he lost there. his job, and he's been on the list to, to try to work again, and it's just taken forever to get down there. He's an excellent teacher, and now there's cutbacks there, and she's, she's losing money, it's just, it's constant. I've worked with the school system for almost eight years now and feel like my job's constantly over my head. They're, they're trying to fire everybody. I guess I should just feel fortunate to have one right now, despite the pay cuts. Well, we're also getting harassed by the creditors. I mean, we're just, it's constant. Okay, like it's, who? Like credit cards? Yeah, the credit card agencies. We're, we have a lot of debt there and we can't pay it off. And right. there's really not a lot we can do. We. We have two children, one that we have to pay for preschool. We're under on our home. Got the mortgage, like, we got two mortgages that we're dealing with. We had a pool put in. Uh, it seemed to me that they were not at the point where they wanted to let their house go. So the, bit, the thing that kind of caused you to come in here is your house, right? I put so much work into our house that I do not want to give that house up. Dealing with a couple like that, I think it's important to always present the fact that what, all we're trying to do is, is give them some options. They may not like the options, they may not be the best options for them, but at least we can give them some ideas on ways they can go. We just wanted the American dream. We had the, we had the house, we had the cars. For a family of four, you're gonna be under median income, so that's gonna give you some options, either chapter seven or chapter 13 options. And I, and I know you might not want to file, but basically I'm just here to talk to you about some options. So when you leave here, you should at least be able to, you know, have an idea of what you might be able to do in bankruptcy. I mean, I know you don't want to file bankruptcy, but we can... What about all those phone calls we're getting? Everything. So what? That's what caller ID is for. You know, there's two kinds of bankruptcies. There's Chapter 7, which is a straight bankruptcy, and it'll allow you to get out from some, under some debts. What it won't do, though, is help you save your house. If you want to save your house, we should be talking about a uh, possibility of a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. Uh, my advice to them, 
uh, was to do a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, which is a reorganization. Um, a lot of people mistakenly think that in a Chapter 13 you have to pay all your debts back, and that is not true. In some cases you do have to pay all your debts back, in other cases you don't. Uh, as attorneys, you know, our job is to pay as little debt back as we can within the law. So in their case, they were under median income. Uh, so what that means is they have the option, uh, all things being equal, they have the option based on their income of doing either a Chapter 7, that kind of a straight bankruptcy, or doing the reorganization the Chapter 13. And the decision to go one way or the other really boils down to keeping the house or not. So what happens is if we were to file a Chapter 13 bankruptcy today, you'd have to pay back $10,000. We would add roughly um, $4,500 in fees, uh, which is, and then we would have to add the trustee fees, which are, is what the trustee charges to administer your case. So, so what does that mean? You'd have bankruptcy payment that you pay to a bankruptcy trustee of about $450 a month, mm -hmm. plus next month you'd have to start making your regular mortgage payment again. However, you would not have to make any credit card payments, any payments to the IRS, you wouldn't have to pay the, first, uh, the second mortgage, and you wouldn't have to pay the pool loan. So really, you'd only have the mortgage payment and the bankruptcy payment. We would actually be able to get that bankruptcy payment down even further by just stretching your plan. Like for instance, if you went uh, 60 months, your bankruptcy payment would drop down to 260 a month, plus your house payment. But our, our credit would be repairable after that, is that correct? I we, mean, in time, right? In time. You'd have to finish out the bankruptcy. The problem is, of course, is the income. So um, that's an issue. You said you had a Harley, right? Yes, I have a Harley. What about it? It's paid for. Yes. But I'm telling you right now. I know you want to keep it right. We'll talk about that. Um, do you have any idea what it's worth? Probably a lot. What's a lot? I don't even want to talk about this, to be honest with you. Coming up, Sam receives an emergency phone call. There's a lady on the phone. She says it's an emergency. She's got a trustee sale set for her house tomorrow. Bill Simpson is drowning in credit card debt, upside down on his home, and his mother in Chicago needs his care. So you're just barely making it right now. Scraping by. What can he do, and will he be able to care for his mother? And will Mike Spencer be able to keep his motorcycle and his home? The bike is very important to me, and you're not going to lose the house. I put a lot of work into that house. Coming up on Real Bankruptcy Vegas.